When you go to a theme park or some adrenaline junky tourist attraction, you expect it to be safe. Thrilling, sure, but safe. But how can the companies that create those rides test a new one? Say you've got a new invention, like, say, a zip line that goes round corners. There are a few rides sort of like it in the world, but they all use different technologies and work in different ways. There are standards for things that are mass produced. How do you test something that's one of a kind? You really swing outwards on that, don't you? <laughs> we as a company like to uh, invent and break and test stuff. So we've gone through the process of testing other people's stuff to making our own. Traditionally, zip lines are a cheap amusement ride. They go from point A to point B, and you need to have clear line of sight. Um, they're different from a roller coaster, which is able to go around corners, <laughs> but has an awful lot of expense in building the infrastructure to hold the rails up. The difference is our product transitions from a wire rope cable into a corner which is rail based. That allows you to go much further because the zip line can travel kilometres and a corner can provide a lot of entertainment. We have a patient on the technology, so we've got sole use of it. Previously, braking systems were friction based. Our new system has eddy current brakes. This is a property of materials that occurs when you move a magnet through a conductor. I have in my hand an aluminium channel that acts as the conductor. If I drop a steel mass down this aluminium conductor, as you would expect, it will fall. If I now drop a magnet down this aluminium conductor, eddy current braking will slow it down and it will fall at a very slow rate. We've captured that and incorporated it into our eddy current brake. That allows you to have no contacting parts, so there are no wear surfaces, so there's no brake dust that's created the brake is configured such that, regardless of the rider weight and wind conditions and gradient of the corner, you will always fall at a peak velocity, which we have governed. No electronics in there whatsoever. Uh, it solely works on springs, centrifugal force and air current braking. Regulations on rides and attractions differ massively depending on where you are. In some states in the US, for example, the job of checking that a ride is safe is left to the insurance companies who'd have to pay out if there was an accident. The only time the government gets involved is if something has gone so wrong, if a company has been so negligent that there might be criminal charges. Other countries, like New Zealand, are a bit more strict. There is a difference between foreseeable misuse and unforeseeable misuse. If someone gets their phone out on a ride to take a picture and it falls out of their hands and cracks someone's head open underneath, well, you should have seen that coming when you built the ride. Someone was probably going to do that. You should have put a net down. But if someone deliberately breaks the restraints so they can stand up on your roller coaster, and that's their own fault. The definitions are deliberately vague in law, though, because it's easier to say that you should do everything reasonable rather than change the law every time someone invents something new. Most countries have their own national standards, and they are acceptable ways of doing things. They, they lay out how you should engineer things, how you should test them. It's important to comply with standards. It's also important to show that you've complied with standards so that people can trace what you've done and why through the design process. Generally, when you're doing something new, though, there isn't a standard that you can use to encompass the entire product. So what we do is we actually go out and we look at all the standards and we pick bits from each of the standards that we think are most applicable. When you design a ride, for example, a zipline ride, you work out how fast the person's going to go and how much force they're going to apply to each of the components. If you have a safety factor of five, you multiply the maximum that the system will see by five, and you need to design and test to that factor. What we need to do, though, is we try and work out what will go wrong should any part of the system fail. And part of that failure mode's in effect analysis is to work out how people could uh, do stupid things, which they will. You look at history, you look at what people have done on zip lines in the past. The main thing is to stay involved right through to seeing the thing being used, spot potential misuses, and, and mitigate for them. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh man, that doesn't look like much from the outside, but when you swing around that corner, it makes a heck of a difference. <laughs> Thank you very much to all the team at Home Solutions. Uh, you can pull down the description for more about them and their work. The first one of these rides is going in at Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, sometime this year. Thank you, folks. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs>